All right, welcome back. Should we try it? One more video? Let's see what we can do. Let's talk about the quaternary, shall we? Biggest thing in the quaternary, extensive glaciation. Um, this is at the maximum glaciation, the Wisconsin uh, glaciation. Uh, we can see the uh, Beringia and the Bering uh, land strait isthmus of Panama connected. So let's talk about life going on. Okay, we have some glaciations, of course. So this covers about the past two and a half million years. Seems like a lot, not a lot in terms of Earth. Um, it's the third and last of the three periods of the Cenozoic and divided into two epochs. We have the Pleistocene, which is where we had all that glaciation, and the Holocene, which is the epoch we are in today. Um, as you recall, famous for uh, glacial growth and retreat, uh, but we also get the extinction of many large species of mammals and birds um, to get more so things looking like they are today, but also the spread of humans occurred. Excuse me. The land bridges, especially of uh, the Bering uh, Sea Land Bridge, the Beringia, uh, really helped and affected the migration of organisms during the Neogene, including humans as well. Um, so maybe a little view of what that might have looked like is something like this. All right, we have hominids starting to appear more Homo sapien-like. Um, we still have some larger organisms, but they're dying off. Modern horses, saber-toothed cats, woolly mammoths. Um, yeah. Among the better known animals of the Pleistocene, so during the Ice Ages, are mammoths and mastodons. Uh, giant ground sloths are still around, but also some large predators such as the Smilodon, which is the saber-toothed cat, and Arctodus, which is the uh, known as the short-faced bear. So now we do have uh, both mastodons and woolly mammoths uh, around. So the Ice Age movie, it's got it right. It does have mammoths. Uh, here is the the ever famous uh, saber toothed cat, the Smilodon. Um, again, great fossils because they just happened so recently. And here's that short faced bear, just to illustrate how big these things were. So this is a recreation of the of the short faced bear, just because it has a shorter snout. Its nose is kind of more short instead of a more protruded bear snout that we see now. But, you know, still massive. But these are the things that are, are dying off. Um, so in this extinction of large mammals, it's, it's not a mass extinction as we've defined it in the past. But l many large mammals uh, and birds of North and South America and Australia go extinct. And, and I'm specifically mentioning those. Uh, during this uh, large animal extinction, its vict uh, victims were often the land-dwelling mammals weighing 90 pounds or more. In North America, 73% of these large uh, uh, genus of animals died out, 80% in um, South America, 94% in Australia, which is markedly different than what was going on in Europe, only 30% loss of large organisms, and Sub-Saharan Africa, only 4% of large organisms died off. That's why Africa has so many big organisms now, like elephants and rhinos, and they evolved from these uh, bigger species that just didn't die out. The cause of this extinction, and, and this is just a, uh, these are hypotheses, um, is that the animals could not adapt to the rapid climate changes at the end of the at the end of the Pleistocenes, um, or and or human hunters killed off large animals in in large amounts. Something or a combination of both. Again, just hypotheses. Um, the extinction of the, the megafauna, the large animals, um, such as mammoths, mastodons, saber toothed cats, uh, all happened at the end of the Pleistocene and the beginning of the Holocene. And that really, um, again, that could have been due to modern humans overhunting them. Could have been climate change, but humans could have had an impact, as we so often do. Modern Homo sapiens, our, our, our kind of species, first appeared um, about 195,000 years ago. Um, about 40,000 years ago, um, with the appearance of the Cro-Magnon culture, which kind of took 
hold in Europe for the most part. Um, Homo sapiens are starting to use tools in a more uh, sophisticated manner. I'm using different materials, and they use these tools for making clothing, engraving, and sculpting. So getting out of Homo heidelbergensis and ne Neanderthals are the more modern Cro-Magnon um, culture. Again, with the ability to use tools, and very intricate and, and um, very detailed tools as well. So there's a level of mental sophistication occurring with the Cro-Magnon culture. Uh, the Cro-Magnon culture is also responsible for um, fantastic cave artwork um, in many different figures, uh, and including uh, cave paintings. Um, there was also other artworks, tools, beads, carvings that they would use. But the, the thing that um, most people kind of associate with the Cro-Magnon culture artistic-wise are these cave paintings and in some cases they're just absolutely fantastic so this is a painting of them doing a painting but this is the real kind of cave drawings that they that they created and you can see that these organisms look similar to ones that we know and understand now some sort of cow or, or, or bison um, some sort of deer or, or antelope. So they are using tools, they're artistic, so again it shows a level of sophistication in the brain capacity uh, of, of an evolved organism. And then getting back to uh, land bridges, during the, the Pleistocene, because of those vast continental glaciers, um, a lot of the oceanic water got locked up as ice, so sea levels dropped. When that happened, the Bering Land Bridge was formed, so organisms could uh, move back and forth now between Asia and North America. So that's actually how woolly mammoths arrived in North America, um, and mastodons, which evolved in America, appeared to spread to Eurasia. So, so mammoths, which uh, is my hand so close, mammoths first evolving in Asia came over to North America. Mastodons evolving in North America went over to Asia. But this land bridge is also what helped humans to migrate to the Americas. Remember, um, uh, you know, human life kind of first evolved out of Africa and spread from there. So as life evolved of Africa from the early hominids on to modern Homo sapiens, so starting in two million years ago, we get organisms moving out of. Um, the, this cradle of, of hominid evolution in Africa, and you can see how they kind of diversify. And it wasn't until um, seas were lowered and Asia and North America were connected by the Bering Land Bridge that humans, uh, at least 30,000 years ago, could finally make it into North America, down into Central America and South America. Here's just another look at that in a little bit different map as well, a little bit different facts and figures, uh, but right around the same thing. So that only brings us to one thing, and it's the last part of the Holocene, which is the last part of the Quaternary period, which is the last part of the Cenozoic era, and that is the Holocene extinction. That's been occurring for about the past 12,000 years. Um, this is an interesting mass extinction at, <clears throat> as it is defined um, because this is not driven naturally. This is almost 100% uh, human caused uh, extinction. So the Holocene extinction, which is going on for about the past 12,000 years, um, is the extinction of Earth's uh, flora and fauna, plants and animals, due to human activities. Again, all previous extinctions were kind of natural catastrophes and phenomenons. But because of us, there is a mass extinction going on. Just, big, just the mere presence of humans, there's a mass extinction going on. We really are the worst things on Earth. So the increasing human population is posing a threat to pretty much every other organism in the ecosystem in ways it hasn't in the past, including plants and animals. And that's because of selective breeding of plants and animals. So we have a loss of biodiversity. Um, you know, we're only uh, producing certain, you know, specific types of corn, certain specific types of apples, 
uh, we're only breeding certain kinds of animals and we're picking winning winners and losers and kind of forcing an unnatural evolution rather than earth just doing its thing and letting the, the the fittest survive which is natural selection so we're losing biodiversity because of what we're doing um also because of exploitation of resources you know what we're mining out of the ground disturbs ecosystems chopping down trees for wood disturbs ecosystems Urbanization. As cities get bigger and bigger, as populations grow, cities get bigger and bigger and move further and further out uh, away from city centers. You're moving out into nature and you're cutting back and killing organisms. And then obviously climate change and pollution, a big, a big factor in that. And it's estimated that 30% uh, of all of the species on Earth will be lost in the next 40 years. Just a third of all organisms will be gone. And it will probably be no surprise if humans themselves are wiped out. I mentioned this in a previous lecture. I don't give humans all that long um, at the rate we're going. If things change, if we change, if we decide to change as a, as a, a human Earth population, then things can get better eventually. Eventually. Um, if we go down the same path, yeah, humans are gone. And the number one cause is just there's too many people. Right? The, we've passed the carrying capacity of earth and the resources it can provide there's just too many people the best thing you can do and this is this is study this isn't my not my opinion the best uh, they say the best thing you can do for for the earth is uh it's you know most people think oh i, I recycle or i drive an electric car it's great it's better than not doing those things uh but that's not enough, right? If even if everyone switched to electric cars, even if everyone uh, stopped eating meat, which is a major uh, uh, climate change um, driver, is meat production. If even if we do all these things, there's still one big issue: it's too many people. There's just too many people. So the number one thing, if you really care about Earth, the number one thing you can do is have one or less kids to decrease the population. That is literally the best thing that uh, people could do for the earth. Most people, you know, they, some people, they, oh, I want to have six kids. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's your right to do that, or that's your choice to do that. But in doing so, you're you know, making the earth worse around us. So that's not my opinion. That's, that is backed up by, by research. You know, little things like, again, recycling and, 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 and those sorts of things, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, turning your thermostat up so your air conditioning isn't running as much using less electricity yeah all those little things are great but it's just not going to be enough there's a drastic change that needs to be made so what we do the choices we make all of those things have to change if you want humans to survive i know i have a daughter i would love to if she chose to have a daughter as well and i would love to have grandkids but We'll see what happens. But, you know, people's choices are people's choices. And it's hard to sometimes see how our choice affects the world, but that's the reality of it. So what we're seeing in the past couple of hundred years is that um, extinctions are on the rise on the same pace as human population. More people, more other things die. The more we exploit, we're just a pest on Earth. All right, I think that brings us to the end of the quaternary. Plants are doing their thing. Here we are now today. So this lecture ends with right here, right now, whatever day you're watching this. We have finished our discussion on the Cenozoic. We're at the end of the Holocene right here, right now. We've just covered 4.54 billion years of history, both geologically and life speaking. Boy, has it been fun. Boy, has it been maybe annoying at times. Uh, boy, have I been long-winded. Thank you for sticking with it. I appreciate who you are. I appreciate your hard work. I hope you do as well. And until next time, I'll see you around.